Hello there and welcome to the channel. So we are heading into the last couple days of April here on the Saskatchewan prairies and the weather is getting nice and warm and it is starting to feel like crunch time for me. It was only about a week ago that we got a spring snowstorm and everything was covered again in snow. It was very cool outside and just didn't feel like getting out there and working in the garden. But the days are warming up again and the nighttime temperatures are starting to stay above freezing and I have a whole long list of things that I need to get done in the next four weeks or so before our last frost date. And the first thing on my list is to do some up potting of my peppers. So before we get planting up these peppers, I am going to do some bottom watering here in this tray. Let these uh, containers wick up some water from the bottom. Get them good and moist. I have more pepper plants than I could possibly ever need and I'm going to try and share a few but I think a few of these uh, seedlings might just have to get composted because I just don't have the time or room to pot up another 20 plants here so I've um, got some other ideas for some of these cups but uh, for now we're going to try potting up some of our peppers. So I started these peppers in my indoor uh, grow tent this year and I'm not seeing very fast growth. They're, these have been planted a good five, six weeks ago and I feel like they should be bigger by now but um, I'm hoping putting them into some bigger uh, containers will help uh, spur on some more growth. Still another good month before peppers will go outdoors here on the prairies. I usually wait until end of May, first week of June, just watching the nighttime temperatures really closely because we often get some late frosts in um, end of May, early June sometimes that can really wipe out a lot of your little tender annuals. So, so these still have another month to go indoors that we can uh, hopefully see a lot more growth. So I'm just going to start off by potting up just two of each of these varieties because I do have four sweet pepper varieties. I got the banana, the Italian frying pepper, the king of the north, and a rainbow blend. So I'm just going to try and stick with two each of each kind. We'll have a look here at their roots and see what they look like. So you can see they have a pretty good root system going here. So I'm going to try and Maybe a little bit too much dirt in there. So yeah, so these are getting to where they got about four, four to six sets of true leaves. I would like them to, you know, be three or four inches taller for sure before they go outside in the ground. So I'm hoping out here in my garage that they will really take off and get growing. So other things that I have going on here in my garage are still lots of flowers, which are taking up a lot of space. And because, you know, I can't put them outside yet, I'm, you know, they're, they're getting very, uh, some of them are getting quite overgrown, a little bit root bound in their containers, but I really don't want to have to spend too much time potting them up to a bigger pots. So what I might do is like what I've been doing here and just start bringing in some of my outdoor pots that I usually pot up and set around on my patio and just get the plants into them directly right away. As long as I can find space for them in the window, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have eight of my sweet peppers potted up into these larger containers now, hoping that they will stay in here and grow and get a lot stronger and bigger before the end of May. And all these extra pepper plants that I'm left with here, I am, I'm gonna offer them to my sister-in-law, take them to her house, see if she wants to pot them up for her garden. Um, one of my daughters lives down the road and she's getting her garden ready for the first time. And I will probably be sharing some of these with her as well, so. But four pepper plants is all I'm gonna have in my garden this year. So I will keep these in the garage windows here. I will be feeding these with a general purpose fertilizer. 
all of my flowers and everything, I have been just diluting this in a, in a jug of rainwater and feeding everything once a week. So these are all my onions that I started way back in February and I just starting to put them outdoors for a couple hours, start hardening them off. I got three different kinds. I got a yellow globe, the red, red onion and walla walla. And I'm also trying leeks for the first time. And as you can see, I have lots of these as well, way more than I have room for. So I think my daughter and uh, son-in-law will be getting some of these as well. So next on my to-do list today is to get some squashes and some pumpkins started. I'm going to be starting them in these containers as well. I got a butternut, zucchini, sunburst, spaghetti, and for the first time ever, I'm gonna try planting pumpkins. They take up a lot of space, but I, I think I can probably find somewhere to grow them. All of these are gonna be going into containers that I have set up. So most of these actually tell you to just direct sow them into the ground, but I am going to start them up in these. We've got three to four weeks to go. I think I'll get a good start in these cups and then we'll move them to their containers. So when you direct sow them, they recommend you put three to four into one spot and then thin them down to the two strongest plants. I'm going to put two in each of these containers. So these cups I have set up with my own potty mix that is peat moss and some mushroom compost, some perlite, and I also added a little sprinkling of earth, earthworm castings. So for planting depth, it's usually about one inch. So I'm just going to be pushing these down with my finger. Put them in there. Just pinch close the soil. So the squashes and pumpkins are all planted up. Now it's just a matter of finding a warm, sunny spot for them somewhere in my garage here, or we might have to look for some space out in the garden shed. So down here is where I got three kinds of seed potatoes chitting away. I bagged up some of each kind to share with my daughter. And as you can see, they got some really nice, healthy green sprouts coming on them. That's what you want to see when you're getting them ready to go into the ground. I did cut some of the bigger ones up and they've scabbed over really good. And as you can see, again, the sprouts are all coming good. So I have a russet, a red Norland, and also a Yukon gold variety that I'm going to be planting up, hopefully starting this week. I will be planting some of them on the ground under straw and also any container that I can find, I will do some container potatoes as well. So this is my south facing window in the garage that I have got lots and lots of different flowers going. These are mostly petunias that I started from seed snapdragons. And way up top here are a bunch of variety of flowers that are what I call my companion flowers for the garden. I got some cosmos, nasturtiums, and marigolds a few other things going up there and down here we have 18 tomato plants i think i have eight varieties and i don't have room for all of these so i'm not sure what i'm going to do with them all but hopefully i can share them with people if you recall seeing my video i potted these up in just a half a cup of soil in these solo cups so you can see the bottom half of these cups have really a lot of root happening. I did cut some bigger holes on the bottom just to get some more air in there and hopefully let them uh, maybe air prune a little bit. And about a week ago, I filled up the other half of the cup with more potting soil, burying the stems here. So all those little tiny hairs hopefully will turn into more roots. And about a month from now, when it's time to put these in the ground, it should be a really good, solid, healthy uh, root ball for these tomato plants. 
So as you can see here, I'm kind of running out of space in this window and my south facing window. So I already have put some stuff out in the garden shed in the window there, but I think we can make some more space. So it's time to head outdoors and check out what's going on in the garden. So as you can see out here, we're starting to see a little hint of green in the grass, which is very exciting. We got a little bit of a rain the other day, which kind of wash things off and is helping with the greening up of everything. Leaves are just starting to bud out in the trees. I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of what's going on out in the garden. So over here in the garden is where the potatoes go under straw. Uh, as you can see I'm working on putting in a drip irrigation system that I'm hopefully going to set up that will run through this garden area here I'm going to be hooking it into these containers and then another zone over here where the tomatoes peppers and cucumbers will probably go so stay tuned for more videos on that it has been kind of a fun little process trying to figure out all the pieces and parts you need to set up an irrigation system but I'm pretty hopeful that once it is in place it's going to really save a lot of time on watering for me and hopefully have a better healthier garden if you can see here all the direct sowing that i did early in the spring when there was still snow on the ground we have a lot of spinach coming here underneath these domes i've also got some kale and the arugula is just growing like crazy and also got some lettuces coming here so because the evenings are starting to get a lot warmer, I should be able to remove these domes in the next week or so. So I think next up on my to-do list is to get some direct sowing into my containers, some of the cooler uh, weather crops that you can direct seed before the last frost. That'll be some beets, carrots, and probably some more lettuces. So as you can see, I have a lot on the go and a lot of things to do out here in my little garden. So please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can keep updated on what's going on in my garden here on the Saskatchewan Prairies. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.